हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड डिस्कस विद मॉड्यूल फोर एंड टिल नाउ आई हैव कवर्ड फोर मॉड्यूल्स ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग एंड एंटेना थियोरी एंड इन द प्रीवियस मॉड्यूल वी हैव डिस्कस विद द एंटेना फील्ड एंड सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स रिलेटेड टू एंटेना विद रिस्पेक्ट टू देयर Uh, fields with respect to electric and magnetic components and we have seen the relation between them and we have seen multiple field patterns which are getting generated based on the different kinds of antenna in the previous module okay so in this module that is module 5 it is not a not much lengthy module we are going to be seeing with some important types of antenna okay so in module 4 was just the beginning of the how antenna is getting introduced about uh, with respect to antenna fields radiation resistances antenna aperture and all those things were the basics that we have discussed in module 3 and 4 combined right so in this module we are just going to be seeing with different kinds of antenna its characteristics and some of the important derivation with respect to their uh, relationship which is getting formed okay so there are mainly Three to four important kinds of antenna in this module, which we are going to be discussing, starting from small loop antenna, which we are going to see in this video. Then uh, in the next video, let let us see with the radiation resistance of this antenna. Then we have horn antenna. Then we have Yagiud antenna. Then we have micro strip antenna. Okay, so these are the important antennas which we are going to be discussing in this module, and we are going to finish it. Okay, in around five to six videos, I am going to be finishing this module. Very easy and simple module. Okay, so let us start with the concept. The first concept here is with respect to introduction to small loop antenna, or you could be calling it as small loop. Okay, so what do you mean by this small loop? Let us see. First, you should be uh, considering this uh, three-dimensional figure here, where it would be having two components. e phi and h theta okay so similar to this one antenna in the previous module we had discussed right? that is linear antenna in that we had considered two components one is e theta and another one is h phi right whereas in case of small loop antenna we should be taking its inverse that is we should be continue uh, considering the e phi component and h theta component with respect to electric and magnetic fields okay so that thing once you one you need to be keeping in mind and one more thing you should be keeping that in this small small loop as the word suggest we would be having one loop which is getting uh, isotrop uh, isotropically arranged with respect to the origin of this three dimensional plot that is called as a square loop okay so this is that loop formed and these are 1 2 3 4 other the directional uh, uh, paths of uh, these uh, square loop which is formed with respect to this three dimensional surface okay so this figure says that it is a relation of square loop to all the coordinates with respect to the three dimensional coordinate system that is x y z okay so this is in this way the square loop is getting formed here okay so the second figure you see here construction for finding far field of dipoles 2 and 4 of square loop okay so these are the dipoles which are getting formed in this loop that is the 1 2 3 4 right where we should be considering the opposite dipoles that is 1 3 Two and four. Okay, any one of them you consider. Here I am considering dipole two and dipole four, which is kept here with respect to a distance d. Okay, so from dipole two and dipole four, uh, we are having the uh, it is getting uh, originated and it is going towards the distant point p. Okay, so with respect to dipole four, whatever the angle formed in the z axis that is called as theta, and uh, this is <coughs> this is the this is going towards the distant point p. okay so this is used for construction of far field okay in order to construct the far field that is also called as fraunhofer zone okay for far far field we have seen that uh, in the electric dipole far field zones are called as fraunhofer zones and near field zones are called as fresnel zones okay so here we are going to be mainly focusing on the fraunhofer zones so this is all about the figures now you see here what do you mean by this uh, field pattern and how the field pattern is getting generated in this small loop so the field pattern of a small circular loop of radius a is determined by considering a square loop of the same area okay so here the loop which is getting formed is actually a in the far field zone that is called as a small circular loop okay and in the fresnel zone near field zone it is getting determined with respect to this square loop which is getting in the 
origin okay so that's why it is uh, determined by considering a square loop of the same area that is d square that is the area of square it is given by d square and that is equal to pi a square okay so this is area of circle so since square and circles area are same with respect to the near field and far field patterns under small loop that's why we should be equating this that is d square is equal to pi a square where d is the side length of the square root and a is the uh, radius of the circular loop okay so now assume that loop dimensions are small compared to the lambda that lambda is called as wavelength here the loop dimensions which we are considering with respect to the dipoles formed those are very small which is compared to lambda so when loops are small the far field patterns are same for circular and square loops so here when the loops are slightly small that would be negligible okay so when they are negligible you could be directly saying that uh, the far fields of square and circular loop are slightly equal to each other okay so therefore loop is oriented as shown in the figure so in this way the loop is getting oriented with respect to the circular loop and the square loop so now the far electric field has only e5 components okay to find the far field pattern in yz plane that is uh, this plane this is the yz plane and here we should be trying to find the far field pattern because it is going towards the distant point p with respect to two components electric and magnetic components e phi and h theta so in order to find that far field pattern in yz plane it is necessary to consider two of the four small linear dipoles dipole 2 and 4 okay i have told you we should be considering two opposite dipoles so that's why we have considered dipole 2 and 4 with respect to this square loop okay so individual small dipoles 2 and 4 are non-directional in the yz plane so those two dipole 2 and dipole 4 are non-directional that is it won't be having any fixed direction and it is located in the yz plane okay so you see here dipole 2 and 4 are kept here it is going towards the distant point p and those two are getting terminated inside this yz plane okay So here that field which is getting generated is same as that for the isotropic sources that is given by E phi is equal to for isotropic sources that is uh, in the, with, in case of isotropic sources with same equal amplitude equal phase equal amplitude opposite phase and uh, quadrature phase and any phase changes that is case 1, 2, 3, 4 we have discussed right in that we have seen for isotropic source you would be having one fixed electric field component okay so that I am considering here since the field would be same as that of for the isotropic sources so that is given by e phi is equal to minus e phi naught e to the power j psi by 2 plus e phi naught e to the power minus j psi by 2 okay where this e phi naught is, is given by electric field due to individual dipoles and the psi is equal to in case of uh, isotropic sources with respect to short dipoles it is given by dr cos phi right psi is equal to dr cos phi but now in this case you should be considering the value of uh, psi as beta d sin theta or we could be calling it as dr sin theta okay in the uh, previously it was it, it was dr cos phi now it is given by dr sin theta or beta d sin theta and we know that beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda so that's why you would be getting this expression so therefore the value of psi here we should be considering it as dr sin theta so now if you put this psi value here if you solve this now you would be getting e phi is equal to minus 2j why because we are having this uh, e to the power j psi by 2 plus e to the power minus j psi by 2 so here uh, we are having the if we compare it with the sine hyperbolic formula that, that is sine sine function with respect to that we would be getting 2j in the denominator right so that i am putting it here i am multiplying and dividing it by 2j so here we would be getting minus 2j since we have your minus sine then e phi naught into sine dr sine theta divided by 2 okay so this is our e phi electric field which is getting formed and this where this j the factor j indicates that e phi is in is in phase quadrature okay so this j would be indicating that thing because j can be either positive or negative right it is a complex value so that's why it would be in somewhere in the phase quadrature since we are considering only for one plane right that is yz plane 
okay in yz plane if it consists of uh, yz plane is 90 degree and if it consists of both positive and negative values of plus or minus j you could be easily splitting it into two parts okay so one part is 45 another part is 45 so that's why the factor j indicates that the component e5 is in phase quadrature okay so one more thing you consider now if d is very very lesser than lambda that is the side length of the square loop if it is very very less than the wavelength which is formed with respect to the electric and magnetic field then what this uh, electric field would be looking like you see here if e phi is equal to minus 2j e phi naught sin dr sin theta divided by 2 okay where here i have cancelled 2 2 so and we are left with e phi is equal to minus j e phi naught into dr sin theta okay so name this as equation 1 now the far field of individual dipoles e phi naught is given by this term here that is you see here e phi naught for that is the far field for the individual dipoles which I have already seen in module 4 right so that is given by e phi naught is equal to j into 60 pi into i where this i is called as the retardation current into L divided by R lambda. Okay, so this exp expression we already know with respect to E phi naught. So that uh, uh, highlight it here and name it as equation 2. Now substitute this value in this equation. So we would be getting if after substituting equation 2 in equation 1, you see what we get that is E phi is equal to 60 pi I L dr sin theta divided by R lambda. Why? Because we are having here one is minus j and one is plus j okay so if you multiply this j into j is j square and we know that j square is equal to minus one already we have a minus sign here so minus into minus is plus so plus one so j term goes so that's why we are left only with 60 pi i l dr sin theta divided by r lambda okay so now you name this as equation three now if you consider the val uh, l that is the length of the dipole to be equal to the side length of the square loop we would be getting dr is equal to 2 pi by lambda into d that is dr is equal to beta d so that's why dr is equal to 2 pi by lambda into d now you see here area a of the loop d square if the area a of the loop is given by d square then equation 3 becomes somehow like this so equation 3 initially we had got like this right so in this case if we consider the value of uh, dr as d square then we should be completely uh, taking the equation and we should be taking its square and writing the answer. So that's why you see here what we are getting area of the loop d square then equation 3 would be becoming somehow like this that is equal to 120 pi square into i sin theta a by lambda square here separately I have written divided by r. So if you see here, observe carefully, here we have considered initially L, L is equal to D, right? So here L, D values are same. So if you multiply this, it could be equal to D square. Okay. So here in this equation, if it is D square, that D square, I have replaced it by A here because area A of the loop is D square. If it becomes D square, then this D square, whatever we have formed with respect to L equal to D, that I have replaced it by A here. Okay. Divided by lambda square because we are multiplying pi and lambda with respect to their squares. So we would be getting 120 pi square and lambda square here. Okay. So this would be our E5 value. So now this is the instantaneous value of E5 component of the far field of small loop with respect to the area A. Now we know that E5 by H theta that is a uh, if we consider the in free space we would be getting the value for e5 e theta by h5 or e5 by h theta it is one and the same for free space it would be we, would, we know that the answer is somehow 376.7 ohms right or you could be writing that as 120 pi so if we put consider this equation and if you put it in this equation then we, we could be getting the value of h theta as pi i sin theta divided by r into a by lambda square why because you see here we are having 120 pi here okay so here we have 120 pi square so if we consider the h5 component this could be getting divided so that's why 120 120 goes one pi term goes so you would be left with pi i sin theta divided by r into a by lambda square so these are the magnetic and electric field components e5 and h theta with respect to the small loop okay 
सो होप दिस इज क्लियर नाउ यू सी हियर कंपेरिजन ऑफ फार फील्ड ऑफ स्मॉल लूप एंड शॉर्ट डेक पुल सो वॉट एवर जस्ट नो इक्वेशन वी हैव सीन फॉर स्मॉल लूप we are going to compare it and let us see how it is similar or not similar to short dipole so here i have made one table simply here which says two fields one is electric and magnetic one is for short dipole and one is for small loop in case of short dipole we know that the components were e theta and h phi whereas in case of small loop the components are e phi and h theta okay so e theta we had got this answer here in case of short dipole that is j into 60 pi i sin theta divided by r into l by lambda And h phi is equal to j i sine theta divided by 2 r into l by lambda. Okay, so these are the components for in case of a short dipole. And for small loop, it is e phi is equal to 120 pi square i sine theta divided by r into a by lambda square. And h h theta is equal to pi i sine theta divided by r into a by lambda square. So here, if you compare these two, the only thing which is getting separated here is In in case of short dipole, we are considering the length, whereas in case of small loop, we are considering the area. Here it was lambda, here it is lambda square, and here we had the imaginary component j. And in case of small loop, the imaginary component gets multiplied. It would be j square. That would be equal to minus one. So that's why that imaginary component won't be there in case of small loop. Okay. So these are the few comparisons between short dipole fields and small loop fields with respect to electric and magnetic components. Okay. so note that fields of electric dipole and of the loop are in time phase quadrature okay so uh, since the factor j is getting separated with respect to these two uh, fields that is short dipole and small loop actually in both these cases j component would be there okay in both these cases they are in time phase quadrature but in case of small loop if we consider with respect to individual dipole and the Square loop, then if it gets multiplied, j into j gets multiplied, and that gets vanished. Okay, so that's why here in the expression we won't be finding the imaginary component. In reality, for both the cases, they are in time phase quadrature only. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you understood something. This was the introduction of this module five, the first concept that is small loop antenna. Okay. in the next video let us see with the radiation resistance of this small loop antenna again there is there is one derivation on that i am going to be explaining it so please uh, listen to that carefully don't skip that part and like this video subscribe to our channel and keep supporting thank you